congratulations on buying Space Marine the board game and welcome to the awesome grimdark world of Warhammer. The box contains everything you need to play, but did you know that there's even more fun to be had? In this video we'll be showing you how to bring the mighty Lieutenant Titus to life by painting him. Painting your miniatures is great fun and by following this easy guide you'll be able to get your miniatures looking great on the gaming table in no time at all. Now before we can paint our miniature, we need to assemble it. You can use the guide included in the set to help you with this. We've also got a video called Your Mini, full of loads of top tips if you'd like to learn more about building Warhammer miniatures. This tutorial belongs to our super helpful Citadel Colour Painting Essentials playlist. You can find this over on our YouTube channel. You'll also need to set up a painting area. It's a good idea to paint on a hard surface that's covered over just in case we have any paint related accidents. You'll also need a water pot and something to use as a palette. If you don't have a Citadel palette pad, an old plate or a piece of cardboard will work just fine. It's also good to have some paper towels to hand. So in order to paint miniatures we need, yep you guessed it, paint. We're using Citadel paints in this guide. These are specially designed for painting Warhammer miniatures. All the paints we recommend are on screen now, and we won't be needing many to make our Lieutenant Titus look fantastic. These paints are all included in the Warhammer 40,000 paints and tool set. This is a set that includes paints, a brush and tools to help you build your miniatures. It's a great way to kickstart your journey into painting Warhammer. With all that said though, how you paint your miniatures is entirely up to you. Don't feel you have to stick with what you see in this video. Now don't worry if you've never even picked up a paintbrush before, we'll talk you through absolutely everything you need to know. So once we're all set up, it's time to start painting. We always start with an undercoat. This is the foundation layer which gives all our other paints something to stick to. Now there are two ways to undercoat a miniature. You can use a spray can or paint layers of paint onto the model. In this case we'll be painting several thin layers of McCrag blue. However, if you'd like to learn about undercoating with a spray can, we've got a video all about it to help you out. Paint often settles when it's been sat for a while, so it's good practice to shake your paints before using them. This ensures the colour is completely consistent throughout. For this video, we'll just be using the starter brush that comes in the set, but feel free to use whatever brushes you're most comfortable with. We start off by wetting the brush with a little bit of water. Then we wipe away any excess onto a paper towel so that it's damp but not sodden. After that we can load the bristles with a little bit of paint from the reservoir inside the lid. Then we'll be applying it to the palette. Now you can see that these miniatures are packed full of awesome detail. If we apply one thick coat of paint, we might accidentally end up clogging up all of that detail. We avoid this by applying the paint to the palette and thinning it down with some water. Then we apply several thin layers to the miniature. Doing this gets us that lovely smooth finish. If you'd like to learn more about thinning your paints, we've got a video all about it. When you load up your brush, just be careful not to get the paint all the way up to the metal at the end of it. This is called the ferrule. If we got paint onto this area, it could damage the brush as the paint starts to dry. We want to load our brush up so that the paint is roughly halfway up the bristles. Now we also need to keep a point on our brush as this helps us be neat. To do this, twist the loaded brush on the palette and pull it down towards you. Doing this ensures that there isn't too much paint on your brush, and it also helps to get that point. Now we can start applying that paint to Lieutenant Titus. You can be really, really messy here. Just make sure you get the McCrag blue into every nook and cranny. You might notice that the first coat of paint struggles to stick to the miniature. Don't worry, just keep going and get as much paint onto that model as possible. Once that first coat's fully dry, we then apply a second coat. This is done in exactly the same way as before, and you'll see that this covers over much better than the first coat. Then, once that's dry, we can apply a final third coat. Doing this, just make sure we've got into all those tricky to reach areas and there's no grey plastic showing through anywhere. The end result should look something like this. The model should be completely covered in that McCrag blue. Congratulations, you've just undercoated your first Warhammer miniature. So with the undercoat done, we can now paint the black details. Black areas on this miniature include the bolt pistol casing and undersuit as well as any pouches, the chain sword and the hair too. Both paints we've used so far are Citadel base paints. 
They're specially designed to be a little bit thicker and this gives us more coverage on our miniatures. We've got a video that goes into more detail about them if you'd like to give it a watch. It's called base paints. So just like we said before, it's always good practice to thin down paints with some water on our palette. Doing this creates a smoother consistency, which can then be applied with several thin coats to a miniature. This might seem to take a little bit longer initially, but it'll give you a much better end result as it will ensure we can see all of that detail properly. Just take your time and work your way around the miniature, picking out any of those black details. We want to be as neat as you can, but don't worry if you make mistakes, they can always be tidied back up. When you're painting the hair, don't worry if you get any black paint onto his face. We'll be painting over this later in a different colour anyway. And with all those details done, we can see that Lieutenant Titus is really starting to take shape already. Next, we'll be using Wraithbone to paint any cloth and parchment. We'll be applying this just like before, thinning it down and applying a few thin coats. It might take around three coats to get full coverage over that blue undercoat. Again, be as neat as you can, but don't worry if you make any mistakes, just tidy back up with the previous colours. Don't forget though, thin your paint down first. We want to avoid building up too many layers of paint on a miniature as this could create unwanted texture. Painting in all the main details of a miniature like this is called base coating. And with that wraith bone done, we've just got a few more areas to paint next. Now you'll see we've painted quite a few areas of parchment using that wraith bone. And these have got wax seals attached to them. So for these, we'll be using Mephiston Red. We can also use this paint on the chainsaw handle and the details on his shoulder pad. You'll see that this is a really nice bright red and this just adds a nice pop of colour. Some of these details are quite small, so don't worry if you make any mistakes. Just be as neat as you can. And as always, you can tidy up those mistakes easily with your previous paints. Next, we'll be using Corax White. And we can see that Titus has one white knee pad, so we'll be using this paint for that area. Again, it will take a few coats to cover over that quite dark undercoat. So just thin your paint down and apply a few layers. You'll probably find it easiest here to paint the whole knee pad in white. Then go back over with McCrag blue and pick out that ultramarine symbol. Now we need to paint his face and we'll be using Bugman's Glow for this. Remember, we're just using the paints from the Warhammer 40,000 paints and tools set but you don't have to stick to our suggestions. Feel free to pick up extra paints and paint your miniatures in whatever way you prefer. Again, we'll need to do a few thin layers here to cover over that undercoat. And just be careful around the hair as we've already painted that in. Now we'll be moving on to the metallic areas and we'll start off by using Balthazar Gold. You'll see that this is a shiny paint so that it makes our miniatures look metallic. There are lots of these areas to paint on Lieutenant Titus. We'll be painting the armour trim and lots of the iconography that we can see around the miniature. If you're ever stuck on where to place certain colours on a miniature, you can refer back to the box art for help. Or feel free to choose for yourself. Just take your time and work your way around Lieutenant Titus, picking out all of those metallic details. Even though this is a metallic paint, we treat it just like all of our others. We need to put some onto our palette and then thin it down with some water. This again helps us achieve that smooth finish. You might need to do two to three coats for this one. Our final base coat is going to be Lead Belcher and we'll be using this to paint all of the silver areas. So this will just be anything left that we haven't painted already. These are things like the chain around his wrist, some details on the chain sword and also the bolt pistol too. Adding this colour in just adds some variety and helps to break up that colour scheme. Take your time and be as neat as you can. Again, mistakes can always be tidied up, but we do want to avoid building up too many layers of paint on our miniatures. Now you might notice that our paint water looks shiny and metallic. We can see those metallic flakes in there. Before we move on to any other paints, we actually want to change this paint water as those shiny flakes could get into our non-metallic paints. This would add shine onto our miniature in areas that we don't want it. So just give it a quick change and get some fresh water. Now you could absolutely stop painting here. Titus is already looking awesome and is more than ready to charge into battle against those hungry Tyranids. However, if you'd like to see how to make Titus look even more heroic, keep watching. The next thing we're going to do is apply Agrax Earthshade to the whole miniature. This paint looks different to all the others we've used so far, and this is because it's a shade paint. Shade paints are very thin and are designed to slightly tint the flat surfaces of a miniature while settling into the recessed areas. This exaggerates the shadows and is a great way to take your paint job to the next level. 
To learn more about shade paints, you can watch our video all about them. Agrax Airshade works over loads of different base coats, so we can apply it all over this miniature. Be sure to give the paint a good shake before you use it. This will just make sure everything's mixed up properly. Then we'll add some to the palette here. And we're doing this just to make sure that we don't overload our brush. Shade paints can quickly run out of control on a miniature. Once we're happy with the amount on our brush, we can then apply it to our model. We want to do this quite heavily but neatly, working in small sections. This makes sure that it dries evenly and doesn't leave any marks on the flat surfaces. You'll notice that the paint tends to sit in the recesses and pull there. We don't want this to happen too much as it won't give us the finish that we're looking for. So to stop this, clean off your brush and dab it into the pooling. You'll see that this soaks up the paint. Then we can wipe it off onto a paper towel and continue working your way around the miniature controlling any of that excess pooling. An all over shade like this can take around 30 minutes to dry. Try not to touch the paint while it's drying as this could create unwanted texture on our miniature. And now Titus looks even better, fantastic work. The next thing we're going to do is complete our miniature by basing it. The final paint we're going to use is Armageddon Dust and we'll be applying this to the base. Armageddon Dust is a type of technical paint. This is a range of Citadel paints created for basing and to add all sorts of cool effects to miniatures. We've got a video called Technical Paints if you'd like to see more of them in action. This particular paint is designed to be used on bases to create a textured sand effect. Basing a miniature really helps to finish it off and bring the whole thing to life. We tend to do it last to finish off the painting process, but some people prefer to base their miniatures earlier on or even at the start of the process. So to apply this paint, we're going to show you three different methods and this depends on whatever tools you've got available. Technical paints like Armageddon Dust can be tough to get off brushes, so we don't want to use the brush included in our kit as it's likely to get ruined in the process. So firstly we have the Citadel Texture Tool. This is available for purchase on the Games Workshop website or in one of our Warhammer stores. This is the quickest and easiest way to apply technical paint onto bases as the tool is specially designed for the job. It's a plastic tool with two scoops on it, one large and one small. We use the large end to scoop the paint out of the pot and apply it to the base. The small end's really helpful when it comes to getting the paint around the details on the base. If you can, try to avoid getting any Armageddon dust on the miniature itself or on the rim of the base. This will just give us a much cleaner end result. Now if you don't have the texture tool, there are plenty of other options for applying this paint. For example, you could use something like a coffee stirrer. We'll just scoop the paint and apply it to the base like before. We'll just need to take a little bit more care around those details on the base, as this tool isn't quite as accurate. You could also fashion a tool from some plastic or even cardboard. Here's one we made from plastic packaging. And you can use this in just the same way as the others, just taking care around those details. Technical paint does take around an hour to dry, so make sure you leave Lieutenant Titus in a safe place while he dries. The final thing we do to finish off our miniatures is paint the rim of the base. This just helps to give us that super clean and finished look. For this, we'll be using Abaddon Black. We'll need to thin it down just like before and apply a couple of coats. Now you'll need to handle your miniature while you're doing this, so just make sure you've got clean hands. We don't want to accidentally smudge any paint onto our miniature. And there we have it, Lieutenant Titus is complete and looking heroic. He's now ready to head onto the gaming table and slaughter those Tyranids. If you'd like to learn more about painting Warhammer, you can visit your local store where our amazing staff will be more than happy to help. Or head on over to citadelcolor.com. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Bye.